live. It says live. Cool. It does say live. So. So. A needle pulling thread. <laughs> Dough. That's right. Um, so we're going to do a little marketing brainstorm here. And um, Joshua and I have been doing a lot of work on figuring out what are the best topics uh, and things to chat with you guys about with our videos and, and everything that we're doing right now. And while we were discussing that, we, um, I, I, I threw, I, I've been exploring an idea in my mind about something we can do with, um, with income for life and uh, some ways that we can really connect up with the types of clients that we enjoy more working with the most. Right. And we were brainstorming on this and, having a great conversation, but I was like, Oh crap, you know, we should be live streaming right now. Maybe we should just live stream about a behind the scenes look of what we're, what we're working on and talking about in our business, because I've noticed that we have more live streams that we do than we actually have business meetings. Gene. Hey, Gene. Good morning, Gene. How's it going? Um, so one thing that that's our do, meeting before the meeting, right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. So, so, so one thing that um, I'm, I'm personally very, very interested in is knowing what are the types of topics that we've covered so far that you like, that you enjoy, that you've gotten value out of and, or what could you use as an entrepreneur, right? What could you use the most in your business right now? What do you need the most help with the most guidance on? What are you struggling with right the most right now? We want to hear from you specifically about what you're dealing with so that we can focus in on even more that just the challenges that you're facing. Um, but in doing that, guess what? As business owners, oh, Gene says tech and tools, what to use and where to stop. So many systems, so little time. Awesome. So that's, that's moving in the right direction. Um, what sure. are there any um, specific challenges that you're having around tech tools? Meaning, like, is there a particular tech tool you're trying to make a decision on, or like, what's the actual situation that you find yourself in where you're confused or you don't know how to handle it? Like, and um, I can just say automatically for Eugene, um, not Eugene, but Eugene, you, <laughs> comma, Gene. Okay. Um, Hi, Gene. Yes, uh, that it's uh, time to stop. Wherever you're at right now, stop <laughs> and work with what you've got. Get that in place. Make it make a go of it. I, I, you know, we know what your tech stack looks like right now. You know, being an Empod client of ours, um, so you know, get get that utilized and making you know get, getting momentum put a, a a moratorium as it were on your uh, acquiring of new tech tools and i'm saying this equally to myself as as, as much to you um as a, as a reminder thereof yeah you can really get most of this done with just a couple basic tools and get your list building um and start making money with it with you know whatever your traffic source is an opt-in page and an autoresponder. Like that's really what you need. Yeah. I mean, she, she's, she's got all the tools in place right now to get, get in gear and get the things happening. Got it. Cool. Glad you got cool. it. <laughs> so, all right. So we were talking a little bit about, um, I we've been thinking about who is the perfect end pod client like who's the perfect client to either work with the end pod program or to work with us in a in in private consultation situations and we've had many 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 discussions about this right i'm sure i have yep so in your mind who is our perfect client someone who's already in motion um I, I don't want to be the person that is empowering somebody to get in the game to begin with um, unless they're ready. I spent too much of my career trying to um, uh, motivate, if as it were, other people um, that just simply weren't ready. 
um, weren't ready to step up. If, if, if you're ready to rock and roll, that's, that's, uh, or, you know, so ideally somebody that's already been in business is in business. Um, and from my point of view, somebody like is a consultant, a freelancer, a, a coach, um, and frankly, somebody that, that doesn't necessarily know how to, that, that might even, uh, hate sales and marketing and think, you know, they're running a business, but they think that, you know, marketing's evil and those types of things and that they want to, uh, find a way to market ethically that serves people that, um, is enrollment based as opposed to, um, you know, uh, uh, trying to false scarcity and all that kind of crap that goes along with it, the hype stuff, stuff. Um, and, you know, so, so when I think about it, it I, I think about serial entrepreneurs. Um, I think about. So serial entrepreneurs, people who started more than one business and enjoy starting businesses, like starting yes. new businesses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the category doesn't matter as much to me, uh, although I do believe there's a huge opportunity for people that think that either the internet has passed them by mm. and that they don't know how to capitalize on it um, because it was just getting started anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I you know, the, the people that are, you know, kind of gun shy about marketing or paid advertising or systemizing their, um, their feeder system of new business, whatever that looks like for them in a, right. in a systematic way. Um, so, I mean, I think about the, the three main categories I think about are small business owners, serial entrepreneurs and, um, uh, freelancers. And, and I, I really do put freelancers in a different category from a serial entrepreneur because it's kind of like a per project based mindset for a lot of uh, the, you know, you get a client, you work with that client, what, whatever the, the freelancing is on, whether it's to create blog space or, or to coach them or to consult with them. And then you, you, your project has a beginning and an end, and then you're off finding the next uh, client that you're going to write copy for or whatever. And so it really is a, it's a different animal from like a serial entrepreneur or a small business owner. And I, I distinguish between a small business owner and a serial entrepreneur because um, I think they're two different um, skill sets or mentalities again, there, thereof too, where uh, I think a serial entrepreneur is somebody that enjoys the, like you said, the, the startup mode and all of that. And that's a different mindset than somebody that um, kind of stumbled their way into their own business. And now they're a small business owner, whether that's an online business or an offline business. And they learn the hard way how to become an entrepreneur as opposed to be starting there. Yeah, no, it's true. Um, I mean, but at, at the same time, there are other types of entrepreneurs that can be really, really great with implementing marketing strategies and or systems in their business that aren't always like the, the start a new business, start a new business, start a new business entrepreneur. Sure. They have a real long term mindset on their business and they're more than happy to keep testing and tweaking and, and learning new skills and abilities in their business over time. For sure. Yeah. Like the strategic coach type of, of yeah, like a, yeah, yeah, like a like like a long term um, coach or consultant who's in one yeah. industry and is going to work there for thirty years, right? Yeah, I totally agree. Totally uh, agree. A financial advisor who is open to marketing strategies, which is rare. Um, <laughs> but uh, those are ideal. The the ones I mean, and those are the ones you know, like you see a financial advisor that has a relationship building marketing system in place and they're crushing their, you know, they're running circles around their competition. So if, if somebody can open their, their heart and their soul to what true marketing is, is just about building a relationship with somebody, right. taking them from stranger to where you become their trusted advisor, you know, and it's not anything more than that. It's just about being a good builder of relationship that creates some respect and rapport out of doing that so that they trust you, but they trust you with respect that they respect your uh, recommendations, your leadership, your ideas, your, your, you know, et cetera. 
Well, so so here's what I was thinking about, right? Is we were chatting earlier and I was like, I'm pretty sure there's a pretty good sales letter out there for income for life. But am I imagining that? And I asked you and you're like, no, Tillman, that was my ultimate sales letter of all time. And um, I obviously need to reread it. But my, in my mind, I was like, wow, I bet we, I mean, in the past, income for life generated um, uh, customers that, that bought NPOD. And so I was like, hmm. And I, w- and I was thinking, all right, if there's a sales letter that already exists, we can use that or a modified version of that to sell a low cost version of income for life. As we were mentioning earlier, the free book model popped into my mind. And I think it'd be cool for you to share how much you hate that stuff. Uh, <laughs> but uh, in my mind, Income for Life is it, the book itself is an educational sales letter for NPOT, right? Um, like the experience of going through Income for Life and learning about the Income for Life principles leaves you with the desire to implement them in your life in a practical way. And anyone can figure out how to implement the income for life principles in their life to make more money and or to build toward the financial situation they want to be in the future, right? Right. But it's hard. And it's not because they're principles. It's not like a a clear path for just anyone. Like they, they are timeless principles, but they're not. Like every industry, you have to figure out how, how, how you would apply it. And like every career, you would have to figure out how to apply it in order to really have them be helpful. And because they came out of direct response, I think that people, when they learn about Income for Life, they're like, oh my gosh, I want to set up some, some little businesses that are running and humming in the background, generating revenue um, long-term for me and my family and my business that seems really appealing. Like, how do I do that? How do I start an internet business that does that? Like you've done it, Joshua, right? And your client yeah. done it. And then people want to learn NPOD because that gives them a practical way to build the, you know, invisible internet, you know, money machines that are humming, you know. Yeah, I mean, the problem up. that I see with that though is that it, it attracts the people that are, that aspire to have their own business, but aren't yet truly ready to step up. And, you know, that, that it, it, I want to, I'm fine to start and, and to attract people that haven't yet got their first taste of success, provided they're like you were when you first got your hands on NPOD. You know, it didn't matter what, uh, what we talked about this before, it didn't matter what program you purchased or that you decided to devote yourself to, you were ready to devote yourself to it. It happened to be NPOD. Dude. It, go ahead. The hunger test. Ooh. How hungry are you? You know, and that applies to entrepreneurs too, because I know just speaking for myself <laughs> that I've had the biggest struggles, uh, you know, building back up because I'm just not hungry at times. Right. Yeah. You're not ravenous. But when you're ravenous, you'll freaking eat through a brick wall. Yeah. Anything. Right. That's interesting. So, okay. So, so it's, but I mean, that was the, when, when you said that, we, I, I understand like that. I, I, most people who've experienced any level of success have had at least a few critical moments in their life where they put, where, where they had a choice to either like do something else or put the pedal to the metal. Right. And I'm smiling because that's exactly what I built the IFL sales letter around. Defining, I, defining moments. I, all right. So I, I probably remember it in the back of my head somewhere or something, but like, so like I was a serious, so again, this isn't about me. Every single one of my students that have crushed it have had the right attitude and it wasn't about age and it wasn't about what sex they were and it wasn't about their skin color. Right. It, it wasn't about how much money they had in the bank. It wasn't about whether or not they were married. It wasn't about whether or not they had kids, though. Having ki- having your first kid on the way is a massive hunger enhancer. I found. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's summed up in playing to win versus playing not to lose. You know, when you make that decision, whatever's driving it, when you make the decision that I'm in it to win it, that I'm going to see this happening. I don't know how, but I'm right. I'm done. You know, no playing no matter what. Yeah. yeah. But like it, but like your level of experience 
as a copywriter, as an internet marketer, at knowing how to put up web pages, that's not the factor, right? It helps having some of those skills. No, not, that's yeah, not the that, determining factor. I think I think the, your level of entrepreneurial hunger, the the, yeah, the I agree. fire is burning and you must fucking do it. And your ability to come up with the money to to like invest both in your education and your business along the way, which is a very tough thing because a lot of people have the hunger, but they well, give up on themselves when it comes to getting the money together. There's two sides of that, right? I mean, there's the you said that they gotta fucking do it, that they're that they're under pressure, that they've got that's one side of it. Mm. The other side of it is that I've just made up my mind that I am gonna do this and it's done. I don't know whether it's going to be successful, but I am done playing small. And frankly, that's what it was for me. I pursued with various degrees of lots of hunger early on with like lots of like, holy shit, I've got this hanging over my head. I've got to, I've got to make this happen. Right. And it wasn't until I decided to have a win. I decided that I don't know whether this is going to work or not, but I'm going to finish this. I'm going to see this through. I'm going to do this. And I gave myself permission to fail. And so I think there's two sides to the equation because for me, it didn't work that negative, uh, you know, put, putting all that negative pressure on me didn't, didn't work. At least it didn't for the 32 years that I was, uh, you know, uh, attempting it. And, um, you know, it, it was after I, I made a, a clear decision and it wasn't out of, you know, it, there wasn't a desperation behind it. There was a decision and a clear. Yes, that's Ooh, a great desperation word. Desperation versus dedication. That's yes. interesting, right? That's interesting. So, uh, so okay. So, my thought was, how could we create a viral giveaway system for income for life that hit on the right? hot buttons um, to not only have it sell, you know, sell spread like crazy, but also really attract the right clients. So right. I guess one thing I would really like um, is uh, if, if there's a link or a PDF or something of that sales letter that you can get your hands on, I would love to reread it, even if it's not attracting the perfect client, right? Just to kind of re re I can get my hands on it somewhere. I don't know where, but I can get my hands on it. That would be so awesome. Um, so I was kind of even thinking about like, what if like a like a system where we give it away, or you can buy it, right? So like, um, I like that. We give it away. You can if, earn it, or you can, you know, you can purchase it through the viral, or you can purchase it super cheap, <laughs> right? Like, and, and and oh, so. I am, I've personally had some really good experience with free book type campaigns. And I know that you feel very differently about that. And, and that to me, like giving away the, or, or selling it low cost or having it be a, a giveaway is not that different than a free book campaign. And I'm it is in the mindset, it attracts a different caliber of client. They're, they're bargain seekers They're I mean, it's like the, the group on uh, effect where, you know, somebody is buying a Groupon and, you know, the interesting thing in, in the Groupon phenomenon is that it was the EpiPen that put a lot of local businesses out of business, only they didn't know it, right? And the interesting thing was that people were buying the Groupons were already customers of the, the, the right. businesses. Right, so they weren't acquiring they the customers, they were, they were giving discounts to existing customers. And they were, they were it, was, it was a denigration of the quality of those customers because it appealed to the people that only wanted to, you know, buy a hundred dollars worth of stuff for, for 50 bucks. Right. And, right. Um, you know, it, 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 that's that's the mindset. In, so it, and appealed, I, it appealed to cheapskates. Yeah, I mean, I was doing this from 2005, 2006 with the Two Comma Club for the four years that I ran the Two Comma Club it, right. it, before it was all the rage, right? I did the free trials um, and I, I gave a two-month free trial. I gave two um, I months worth of, of the newsletter away and I had it, uh, the, the way that I... Uh, fixed a lot of the issues were is that I had the same two newsletters that went out that 
strategically built the right mindset, conditioned them to to think the way that I wanted them to uh, to think, so that they could get the results that they wanted to get from it. Right. Right. And um, you know, uh, go go from there. But it it and then they joined what I called the general population on the third issue, whatever that was for them. So the first two issues were always the same. That also made it easier to fulfill because it was a physical newsletter. It wasn't uh, a, a so solely a digital thing. Cool. But the problem was that, that it, it just, it still created this mindset uh, long-term and, and, I repeated it with multiple times in different things for myself and for clients. And then as recently as 2014, repeated it again, created a huge uh, success and a huge win behind the model. But the, the client was still, it was still a different mindset. It was still a different, you know, they, they wanted that for free, even though I mean, like if you sold the book for 10 bucks, instead of saying it's free, plus just pay the, the shipping and processing, just just sell the same thing for 10 bucks. Yes, your barrier to entry is a little bit higher because you're actually selling something rather than tricking them into buying it. Although now nowadays everybody gets the jig pretty much. I mean, unless you're you're in a different space. Right. Um, and then it's dependent on, frankly, a series of strategic upsells and bumps and all these other types of offers that I don't want any part of because it's just about maximizing your short-term revenues. I don't want to do that. I want to maximize the results for my clients long-term and I want to build relationships with them such that they come in and they do business with me and they continue to grow with me and I do with them and we create more success as they create more success. It's so so. Check this out. So I I I I, I have a challenge for you. I think you'll like it. I'm so listening. We have um, a cool guy who's been tuning in recently named Patongo, and Patongo I see. Yeah. is a. Um, I mean, I don't know how you refer to yourself, Patongo, but Patongo is a jewelry curator and salesman. Love it. And uh, my understanding is that Patongo. Um, has had a business in New York City, um, uh, mostly on the streets, as I understand it, um, selling this amazingly beautiful, ornate, super high-end, funky, sp super spiritual ju jewelry, mostly metal and crystals, lots of silver, like pretty high-end stuff, like not not cheap stuff. Um, for I, I have one of his rings. Um, I was introduced, I, I don't know that we've ever met in person, but he's doing some really funny videos, really like he's, he's very eccentric and off the wall. Tongo, I hope you, uh, appreciate the fact that I think you're a total weirdo. Um, I mean that that's a good thing. Loving of ways. <laughs> um, and the thing is, um, I think that everything that he sells and Tongo, let me know if I'm wrong here. Um, I think that everything he sells is a one of a kind and I don't know um, if he makes it or if, if it's imported or if he has specific artists that he works with in other countries. I, I don't know exactly how it all comes into his possession, but since COVID hit, Tongo has been in the woods doing all these crazy videos like out in the woods because he's not in the streets in the city anymore. And um, I've just been thinking about how he could blow up his business using some of the principles that, um, I learned from you and that we're teaching now. And I was, so when it comes to thinking about like income for life principles and or end pod principles, what are some thoughts or ways that a one of a kind jewelry salesman and maker possibly um, could, how, how would this apply? Because this is, I mean, he's, he's selling things that, that um, are each unique, so it's not like a, a fully automated sales system. But I don't think he's making them all, and so that means he can he can he can get stuff in a in a somewhat leveraged way, right? But it's not mm -hmm. like factory cookie cutter. So, what are your thoughts on end pod principles or some of the stuff that we talk about for a one of a kind jewelry salesman? I love it. First off, um, and Patanga. Uh, uh, I'm not a stranger. I don't know where in New York City on the streets you are uh, selling your wares, but uh, 
I guess, shoot, 40 some odd years ago, I did the same thing in, in front of Zay bars on Broadway on, uh, you know, in selling books and um, back in the day, um, born and raised <laughs> New York City. So I can totally relate to it. And, you know, that's a different, uh, you know, the audience that depending on where he's selling, that could be extreme just because he's selling it on the street does not mean that the quality of client is uh, any less. In fact, I mean, that's why we set up in front of Zabars. I mean, we knew the type of client on the Upper West Side that went into Zabars and that shopped there and that was a regular there. And we knew that that's who we wanted to, you know, that's the kind of books that we had that we were selling that it would appeal to them. And uh, so like that. So how would we would do this? Um, well, I would uh you know i mean because it's so unique i would i would talk about i would build a following doing the craziness that he's already doing now i'm not familiar with what that is but i would continue to do that and tie in the uniqueness of what it is that he's doing and um you know it, it, and have the you know have it almost be a showcase for this unique piece and, you know, this too can be yours. Just, you know, I am me if you want this or, you know, and eventually um, it, you could set up a, an auction bidding, you know, yeah. scenario. And Okay. Yes. Oh, I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> I, I was thinking, so I think all these pieces are one of a kind. Tongo, let us know. Are they all one of a kind? Yes or no. Um, and so I was like, get on the, get on the, on the list, get on the newsletter so that, so that we can show you upcoming auction pieces and, and invite you to our, um, insiders, our, 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 our exclusive, yeah. enlightened, um, magical jewelry auctions. And they could be thematic, um, based on like the type of work that it is, or it could be thematic based on like celestial things going on. Like, because I know your stuff is super spiritual. I'm guessing it tends to attract a very like spiritually, spiritually in tune type person. Um, uh, that's that's going to be all about like mer Mercury leaving retrograde and all that kind of stuff. So uh, it'd be cool. And then I was imagining um, you being like an like like a, a an auctioneer and um, and doing Facebook Live auctions. And on the lot on the Facebook Live, people could say yes, 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 and then you could have it like on an eBay site, it, like, and you could just sell your stuff for ten Great times idea. more than you normally do. It'd be so good, and you don't have to auction everything off. You could just auction the really crazy stuff off. But um, yeah, you could totally build so a building a following for sure. Um, yeah. And the 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 people that are. Um, you know, spiritually minded, it doesn't mean that they don't uh, spend money either. I mean, right. they, they oh, no. do on the things that they absolutely love because I'm one of them. I mean, I okay. love the 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 whole thing. And if it makes me feel better and I'm in tune with it, I'm in, you know? Right. Right. And uh, so, yeah, I, I think that's really, really powerful. I like the idea of building a list around the exclusivity of being able to be first, the right of first refusal type thing as right. well. Right, right. Um, every item is unique, and um, we're doing magical internet auctions. And yeah, and I mean, you can tie it in. I, I again, I don't. I'm, I'm handicapped because I don't know what kind of nuttiness that he's doing, but I'm sure it's awesome in the woods. But you could t so tie that in, and at the end of each one, regardless of whether you're actually selling a piece or not, you could sell the the connection with. Um, uh, you know, the access, I, I guess, you know, the, the ability to join their list, his list, That's right. and, um, you know, access to being first to know about these crazy things. Oh, dude, not to mention, not to mention that you could totally start a Facebook group just for Patongo jewelry owners. Yep. Okay. And not, and, and, and everyone can like, yeah. You only can get in when you become a customer. He he just commented that it's not necessarily for the spiritual, though. Fine, cool. I mean, well, you know, yeah, you I mean, know what your market is. Yeah, I'm. Um, yeah, yeah, you, you totally know your market. Wait, I mean, you've been doing this for a long time. I'm, I'm imagining you wearing like this 
oversized cowboy hat um, doing these funny With some straw and some tobacco se- se- selling jewelry from Sri Lanka. You know? like, yeah. Do I hear one? Do I hear one? <laughs> He's so funny. Oh my gosh. It would be hilarious. Or, or <laughs> you could like, you know, there, yeah, there's all sorts of funny stuff that you could do. <laughs> um, very cool. Very cool. So guys, we're doing a little marketing brainstorm here, and we have lots of cool people who are watching. Marilyn Zink, hello and welcome. Georgina, nice to see you again. Chris Munch, good to see you. Mohammed, hello, hello. Um, and who else do we have? That's all I can see quick and easy. But um, if you guys have um, questions about uh, anything that we're talking about or topics, that you'd like us to do future live streams on, we'd like to hear from you. So please go ahead and, and let us know. Are there any topics you'd really want all us to focus on? Um, Gene earlier was referencing different tech stacks to use when and why and how to know when to stop adding on and overcomplicating and, and when is it a good idea, right, to add new technology into your business. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, that, that is an important point. I, I, I didn't mean to make light of it. I was just uh, speaking with Gene directly because we, we know each other very well and we are the same, we have hold the same weakness. Um, but I, I, it's probably something that, that we all struggle with, uh, you know, um, to a greater or lesser degree because it's, it's, um, so easy to get caught up in, you know, the, the technology and the latest breakthroughs and the late, and cause there's all sorts of great stuff coming down the pike, you know? Yeah. And it's, and it's not a situation where you should ignore it. Right. Because there's amazing stuff that can very quickly add significant amounts of revenue and or connection to your business. You know, can um, you put, I'm sorry, can you put Georgina's comment up on the screen that just came in? It's awesome. The answer is maybe, <laughs> um, I think so. Let me see. Oh, sure. Jordan, what a great question. Sorry oh, to interrupt yeah, you. This is so good. How can I promote virtual consultation? I'm a naturopath and acupuncturist. Georgina, great question. Very practical and applicable to anyone that works with clients or worked with clients one on one or face to face in any capacity. Um, I, I am a hypnotherapist and for many years, um, worked with clients one-on-one prior to going online. And so, um, and I've trained hundreds of hypnotists how to bring their practice online as well. So, um, this is not a new question, but it's a very, very important one. Joshua, do you want to jump in first or shall I? No, I think you should, because you've got uh, directly applicable and uh, adaptable insights. Great. Great. So Georgina, the first thing is to remember that you're not an acupuncturist and you're not a naturopath. Okay. Are you, do you have those credentials? Did you go to school for it? Did you spend however many years of your life getting that training? Of course you did. Um, But what you actually do is you solve problems for people, health problems, perhaps mental, emotional, energetic, physical health problems to various capacities, I suspect. And there are certain problems that people will pay acupuncturists for and certain problem for solutions with and certain problems that people will pay naturopaths for solutions for much more readily and easily than other problems. And so the, whether you're online or offline, it doesn't matter. It's the same problem, which is how do you attract the right types of clients and customers who are ready, willing, and able, in your case, patients who are ready, willing, and able to give you money for your services. Okay. And the way that you do that is by honing in on the problems that you solve, assuming your, um, so, uh, so as an acupuncturist you, yeah, slash, I don't know how much you've studied, probably a lot, um, Chinese herbs and, other different ways of addressing yin yang imbalances in the body and and all these types of things. But um, I'm a big fan of acupuncture and I have several friends or had several friends over the years who are acupuncturists and I've had like hundreds of treatments. So, but it doesn't make me an expert. 
Um, what I do know is that acupressure is something you can teach people how to do at home if you're limited to working with people face to face. If you can't work with people face to face, um, then acupressure um, are solutions. Obviously, a wide variety of Chinese herbs and or teas, et cetera, et cetera, um, are available to sell and or quote unquote prescribe to your patients that also can be done long distance. Not to mention me different meditation techniques and, and other types of things that you've probably learned away along the way in order to help people um, to solve their problems if you're limited face to face, I, right? Can I jump in with something also? Yeah. Um, I used to have a standing appointment with virtual with a, uh, an energy doctor um, that was also a chiropractor and also a um, acupuncturist. And uh, every week for somewhere between an hour and a half and two hours, every Friday, I had a standing appointment with him and he worked with me over the phone long distance and it was phenomenal. But what comes to mind for me that could be part of your virtual business model is um, muscle testing and reflexology and the connections because I I don't know much about neuropath, but acupuncturist, it's the same thing, right? I mean, you're, you're clearing away blocks and energy that, that's getting backed up. And so if you could figure out a way to do, and I'm sure Tumman's about to talk about this, but the, the, um, uh, they're doing, um, uh, there, I got distracted. Thank you, Valentino. <laughs> um, I, I, I appreciate your words. Um, the, 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 what, what, I, I'm sorry, I just I completely, oh, I know what I was going to say. If you can do what Telman ended up doing with his hypnosis business right. and giving away a free hypnosis session right. to sample it and then turning it in that, you know, you might not be able to do a, uh, a, an acupuncture, an acupuncture treatment, but you can certainly go within um, that that approach and and continue to uh, um, you know work with people on an energy level on a, um, a connection basis, etc. Cool, I totally agree. So here's how you do that, right, Georgina? And and for most of you who are watching, you can apply the same principles. So what most acupuncturists would do is they would put out something that says, is acupuncture right for you? Come on and have a free consultation to find out, right? And then your phone will never ring. Um, or naturopaths will say, is naturopath, you know, is the naturopathic way right for you? Come on in for a free consultation to find out if we can help you out. Nobody is going to give a crap. It's going to have a, like, a, like a trickle of new people coming in the door. On the other hand, if you have, like, let's say that, if you look at all of look at all of the people as a naturopath and as an acupuncturist combined, okay, all of the people who've come into you and given you money in your career, I don't care about anybody else. I just want to know about the people that have given you money. What's the number one problem that people in your area have given you money in order to solve? So that's the question I want you to answer. And maybe you have two or three of those, in which case I'd like you to answer them in order, okay? Um, and anyone other than Georgina that would like to answer that question can. Again, the question is, what are the top three problems? And let me give you some examples of problems. I'm going to give you funny ones to like hit home. Hemorrhoids. <laughs> if hemorrhoids have been the primary problem that people have given you money to solve, like you're going to know about that. Okay. Warts. If warts are the primary, genital warts, if that's the primary thing. Okay. So, um, or maybe it's, IBS, right? Or maybe it's um, that people, and, and it might be something that you can't directly advertise, but you can still tell us, which is maybe maybe it's like a certain autoimmune disease. Maybe it's fi uh, she fibromyalgia. Just chimed up um, that uh, weight loss and diabetes, Georgina just put in. Great. Thanks, Georgina. So that's a really good place to start. Now, when I say it's a good place to start, that doesn't mean it has to be the place you finish. But if you're trying to generate more revenue, which I bet you are, if you're looking for more virtual consultations, then I would encourage you to focus on weight loss and um, to start doing a, um, you know, a, a private um, session, a first session free on, um, for a taste of, uh, 
is hold on I'm not frozen um, <laughs> base I mean you have to massage it a little bit because weight loss is a highly regulated industry right and you are a medical professional so you need to be smart about how you do your marketing if you're going to touch weight loss with a 10 foot pole you know what I mean or a six foot pole in this case maybe <laughs> um, a six foot needle <laughs> So um, I'm so entertaining myself right now. Um, <laughs> so that's what you really, Georgina, all you need is six foot long acupuncture needles. You don't need to do virtual consultations anymore. So <laughs> if, you, if you're going to do uh, a, could acupuncture help you lose weight? Con, you know, free consultation or could, it, it, could natural, you know, could, could, um, the naturopathic way or even deeper it is is a, 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 a i mean like deeper but also broader where you could say like is a uh inability to uh lose weight or struggling losing weight could it be tied to um energy blockages yes or no you know and, and like an educational insight based approach where you give some some insights away yeah. having to do where you educate them on the the exploration or freeing themselves of energy blocks and that really the reason why they're having a struggle losing weight has to do with some of the blockages energy wise in their body etc and not even mention acupuncture or natural uh uh, uh na naturopathy homeopathy whatever it was uh naturopathy um in the initial marketing. It's not necessary. So let me tell you what I did with hypnosis because hypnosis faces the same challenges and problems that you're facing right now. I'm and we've got a whole, uh, sorry to interrupt you, but I, I do want you to absolutely share that. And I just, there's, there's at least, um, uh, there's a host of comments, but there's a, a an interesting uh, example that Muhammad just uh, gave several comments back about the, you know, in the car part space. And then Stefan uh, off of YouTube uh, said something very interesting as well, um, made an interesting comment that I just want to make sure that we acknowledge and that we we address um, before this is done, because I, I think that it'll be useful to see the different sides of the equation. Yeah, I totally agree. Okay. So the, okay, so here's the idea. Here's what I did. Um, I did this with my local practice with hypnosis first and then brought it online and applied it online later. And it worked both times like gangbusters. And the, when I did it with my local business, it was around weight loss. Okay. Now it wasn't a virtual consultation. It was a in-person consultation at first. And obviously there was no pandemic happening 20 years ago or whatever. So that wasn't an issue, but um, a consultation is a consultation. A free session is a free session. You can do it on Skype, right? Or you can do it on. I'm sure. I'm sure in your in your in your profession, there's probably a um, a tool. I know a lot of therapists are using Doxy. Um, I'm sure that there's an online tool that's that's approved in your in your professions um, to do to do virtual consultations. But at the end of the day, the way I did it online with with a was a free session and it was a free hypnosis session, and it was all 100 percent on wealth hypnosis, money mindset, and essentially overcoming your money blocks, right? Is how to, um, it's, it's, it's hypnosis for wealth, right? It's, it's, if you feel that you're not making enough money and that your mindset is holding you back, here's a free hypnosis session that I create that, that, that you can register for your free hypnosis session. Um, get a taste of what we're working on, see if you like it and, um, and move forward from there. And so what happened was I got people who I got entrepreneurial type people, both entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs who are interested in making more money and are open to the idea and, and realize that their mindset is one of the things that's holding them back. And so I helped them open their mind and I hypnotize them to think bigger and I hypnotize them to make more money and it works. Um, so first session's free, but when I do that session, I say, look, uh, and this can happen in a recorded session or it can happen in a, in an in-person session. It can totally be a recording. Okay. So realize this, Georgina, it does not have to be an in-person session. Either way, you, the, your, your first, 
hundred probably should be. Um, but like that first session, I say, look, this is a first session in a series that I created of um, seven sessions and it's called the blank, blank, blank process. Okay. I had one called the prosperity process. I had another one called the wealth method it can be called the weight loss process. Okay. Um, uh, uh, you, you could call it the whatever, whatever you want process or some other word method system. And I say, so this is the first session and uh, we normally charge $150 a session, but I'm giving it to you for free. And uh, if you like it and you're interested in more, I'll tell you all about the details of the rest of the program after the session's over. So you get a taste. It's going to be awesome. Here's how much it's worth. It's the first session in the series. This one's free. If you like it and we want to talk more at the end, we totally can. Cool? Cool. Easy. That's it. So you're doing the same thing. You're helping people lose weight. You're using skills that are different than hypnosis. At first, you can do three sessions to fo and focus on the types of weight loss related issues that you can advertise in one way, shape or form that you can help people with. And, and I'd like to just um, chime in for just a second here. I think there's a tendency specifically with um, you know, more energy oriented uh, practices or, or mindset type stuff. You know, we see this a lot with life coaches. We see this a lot with, um, you know, anybody that's in this realm of mindset stuff where they, um, they, they, they're too general. You know what I mean? Like, like, I, well, I can help with everything. And by saying that I can help with everything, you help with nothing. Mm -hmm. um, because you're not giving somebody something specific. And I think there's also a tendency because you can truly serve and work miracles on any subject matter, you know, because it all comes back to the same stuff. But when you, when you don't get specific or when you, you, there's a reluctance sometimes to pick one approach first, because it's as, as if it rules out all the other um, you know, avenues that you can go down or whatever have you. It doesn't mean that you can't do multiple different tools, but what it does do is it gives your audience something to really identify with, engage with, and um, say, yeah, that that's me, you know, and, and I didn't realize it before, but, you know, it, it's an energy block. And whatever the, the the subject matter is, it's an energy block. And, and but if they say that to you about that subject, right, you're in because yeah. now they believe it because they've said it to you. And um, so, like, I just want to underline what Telman was saying about his free session. He picked a specific topic and Super subject specific. matter, yeah, very specific. And if I were doing it in his shoes today, I might even get more specific. Uh -huh. You know, I might even go, um, you know, the the money mindset or the prosperity process for expectant well, mothers or for the blah blah blah. You so know what I mean? that's more niche down. But one thing that I have done is I've created a bunch of one off hypnosis sessions as trip wires for my business, and those are super specific. Where I, I the, you can buy them for ninety seven bucks, but when I promote them, they're seven dollars. And, um, there's the 10 K per month session. That's like my second best selling session, the $10,000 per month session. I'll hypnotize you to make $10,000 per month. People love it. And then they ask for me for the $25,000 per month session after they hit 10. It's great. Um, the abundance session is again, it's not for blankety blankety blank, but that's definitely one of the best selling ones. And then the get shit done session. And so I like that one. You can you you can really dial it in. And the money blocks session is the overcome your money block session is also a big seller. But the point is that um, I've I've made all sorts of money mindset sessions that are much more specific than the money mindset session, right? Right, right. Um, and people absolutely love them. Um, so you want to talk a little bit about Muhammad? Yeah, I do, and I I think that I I just want to um. But I want to acknowledge Valentina all the way through. Um, you've been making some awesome comments here um, and uh, uh, somewhat of a note taking uh, process for us as well. So, um, you know, we totally appreciate all of that. 
and um, couldn't be in more alignment with you, uh, Valentina. Thank you. And um, but and then Stefan on YouTube. Um, I don't know if he's watching on your channel or mine, um, but he writes, "How about the quality of the products you are selling? Because I think whatever." how good your marketing is if you sell shit and you don't pay attention to your customers, finally you are going to go down. I could not agree more. That is absolutely in my book, the gospel, gospel truth. Um, I would, you know, I don't spend enough time on this, frankly, because um, for me, it's a non-starter. I don't consider, I wouldn't even consider uh, marketing something that I that wasn't awesome, that didn't yes. create value, that wasn't different in the marketplace. But I know that a lot of people do, right. and frankly, I don't take clients on that do that sell shit. I just right. I refuse to work in and help somebody perpetrate a fraud on on the public. I just won't right. do it. That's right. So, so you know. yeah, spot on, Stefan. I agree one hundred percent. And generally. For us and the types of people that we do business with, that is an assumption. Uh, it's an assumption that yeah, yeah, we don't focus on it enough because we just all. It's assumed. <laughs> and, but the reason it's assumed is because, like, I don't know. I don't do business with scammers. Right. You know, you know what I mean. So uh, it's but it, it's a very real thing. It's a very real thing. Um, so that's legit. And let's see. Um, all right. So, Muhammad, you have this long one. We can show like a sentence and a half of it here. So I'm going to read the whole thing. Um, it says, I am in the car parts space and we sell the parts to customize the cars. Nice. I have a list of customers and we have some exit intent leads where we offer 5% off. We got a lot of people using the coupons from opt in into our list. Any other ideas you can give us? We're in the process and getting more data on our clients and figuring out which car they actually own so we can get better target with them with specific with parts specific to their vehicle. Then we plan on creating a customization infographic and walking them through the customization from, I think he meant form. Okay. Interesting. Um, Mohammed, are there any, Oh, you have some more stuff here. Um, I'm going to read some of the other pieces you wrote in. Uh, you said $100 parts to $500 parts. Okay, great. And um, what types of cars do you offer parts for? And how are they finding your site right now? Like what is the, what is the buying cycle or what is the process by which they navigate through your site and make that buying decision or decide to exit it? Um, because that's that's important to know. Um, I know people in a similar type of space that have done really well, instead of offering a 5%, um, uh, you're welcome, Stefan, um, instead of offering a 5% coupon um, approach, which I'm not saying that you shouldn't, Jeep mainly, awesome. I used to own a Jeep, you know, talk about a member of a club, and, and we can really get into that, because yeah. if you haven't owned a Jeep, yeah. you don't know what it's like to be a Jeep owner. It is a total um, a, a to Google search mainly, awesome. Okay, so um, the, the Jeep mentality, the, the, it's a clubhouse and it's just like Harley owners and, and they, they, um, wish, I mean, they, they, they sh when they, when they drive by another Jeep owner, they, they raise their finger, they wave out the window. I mean, it, it's an automatic, like, like entry into the club. So that in and of itself is huge for your business in parts. The other thing that I just wanted to, um, uh, say about that is, um, that, it, I, I forget where, but uh, instead of using a 5% off coupon um, and competing on a discount rate, um, try offering free shipping when they opt in for the coupon um, and target, since you're doing targeting on Google, target by people that are close to you. Uh, oh, great. And so great. then you good. can- you can do overnight shipping or, you know, guaranteed delivery for, or upgrade their shipping even, you know, for, for overnight, but only target the people that you know that if, if you send it UPS, it's going to get there um, overnight anyway, because of the, the proximity, uh, proximity of the, the process. 
Um, so th those are some things that I would uh, think about. So, um, and Muhammad's been adding uh, steadily here to um, uh, uh, that has been added steadily. So I'm going to shut up now and tell me you chime in. Dude, I've got, so first of all, great idea on the free shipping. And I had a idea on this. So check it out. Well, well, here's the good news, Muhammad. You already told me that your parts are mainly between $100 and $500. So like offering free shipping is great. So what I imagine, what immediately popped into my mind as I read your thing and Joshua was talking was, I don't know if you have a Shopify store or not, but there's a um, tool that I've seen, a plugin for Shopify that I've seen a lot, not super recently, but last year and the year before, it's this pinwheel. And like a wheel of fortune type little thing. So you go to the Shopify store and this, this wheel of fortune slides in on, on the, on the website and you click it to see what you're going to get and it spins, right? And then it lands on something and you get one of the 12 different things for free when you put in your email. Well, in my mind, free shipping might be one of those things. Okay. And I was thinking, um, like the ultimate car, like a, 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 like a spray bottle of the ultimate car cleaner or the ultimate window cleaner or, um, uh, or like, or like the ultimate, um, car deodorizer, um, or, but the good news is because your, your people are mostly Jeep, you could give them Jeep shit. And I don't mean shit, but you can give them Jeep stuff and anything. swag. Jeep, Jeep swag. Anything that says Jeep on it that's lightweight and cool and they can carry on their person or put in their car to make their Jeep a little bit more awesome or remind them a little bit more of their Jeep. Now, these things, a keychain, a hat, a shirt, very inexpensive, and um, they're things that will cost you nothing to throw into their order, right? So what you, you could do, I think – is you might be able to set something like this up and you do do Shopify. So you're going to have to look at it. I, I don't remember the name of that pinwheel thing, but I don't know. I'm going to look it up right now. It's like a virtual scratch off or, or as, as well as a similar thing. Um, and the other thing that, that I was talking about earlier, Mohammed, is that um, if I were you, I would be capitalizing in my marketing all about the Jeep culture. And cool. the the club mentality, and make it about building personality f and uh, serving that group of Jeep owners. We're we're zealots. We're we're crazy people. We we love that, and we love to be acknowledged for it. It's like, um, uh, you know. So in addition to just playing the 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 typical you know free shipping or uh free you know upgrade to overnight shipping or you know five percent off and all of that um which is great uh you can actually differentiate yourself by being all about the club right. being all about you know coming up with uh, like this is just off the top of my head but i'm gonna throw it out there it's um like a t-shirt like you could go to, to Teespring or whatever and do an add on a special clubhouse t-shirt that was really funny. Come up with a funny saying that, you know, that, that when their order goes over $150, they get this, you know, this special club t-shirt with this fun, you know, Jeep do it, you know, Jeep owners do it, blah, 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 or whatever. I mean, I, I, I don't know what that would be. Um, but, Jeepers creepers, you know, whatever it is, you know, and create the the conversation about the culture of being a Jeep owner. And now you look completely different from anybody selling car parts. Right. So, and now on all your social media, you're like sharing Jeep memes. And I'm sure there's a crap load of Jeep memes, right? Um, I totally agree with you on, on the clubhouse and the Jeep swag. Um, I'm glad you know about the pinwheel thing, Muhammad. Something like that could work really well. There's another piece to the puzzle that I'm I'm guessing you probably haven't integrated in here. But if people are buying parts, guess what that means? That means they're fixing their Jeeps and they don't know how. So in my mind, if I was selling parts, I would absolutely have a monthly membership program as your first upsell after people buy anything from you where yeah, yeah. it's like that. 
how to fix anything on your Jeep club. Okay. And you build an ongoing library of fixing stuff. The best and, resources like, for Jeep owners. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great and, idea. And, 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 and like every day you get, you know, you get people to, to do it. And, and that's the kind of thing where you could even get your members to submit the videos for you over time. And you wouldn't even need to create them yourself. You know what I mean? You'd tell them how to do it. And you'd be like, who wants to be mechanic of the month? Right. That's actually pretty hot. Mechanic of the month, like for, for Jeeps. Um, and, and you could totally crush it. Um, uh, uh, and add enormous continuity revenue to your, to your income that probably doesn't exist right now. I'm guessing. Um, so that's something I would definitely do. Yeah. The other thing that it, it, I don't know if there's a way to track this, but you know, how many of the people currently right now before they purchase from you or, you know, as part of their process, are they going over, are they looking you up and then they searching for the same product on Amazon? Um, you know, because a lot of Amazon Prime customers that get shipping for free and all of that, they and and have certain buying incentives on Amazon, they'll find it somewhere first, and then they'll go and buy it on Amazon. And they'll look it up on Amazon. So, if you don't figure out a way to be unique and and offer something that they can't get anywhere else that is specific to you, um, and and your way of doing business then um, you're, you're going to end up at some point being a- advertising for um, Amazon yeah, or a bigger all your money advertising for somebody else. Exactly. Yeah, yeah totally. I, I, I definitely, I would definitely get them in the club and that's the kind of stuff that we teach in our program. Right. So if you guys are looking for ways of really standing out and making a name for yourself in your business in a way that is truly unique in the marketplace and you value and you understand the importance of really having a bonded, deep relationship, long-term relationship with your customers, with your clients, with your patients, then um, what you can do is you can just type connect into the comments below, type connect, C-O-N-N-E-C-T, type connect, and reach out to either me or Joshua in a private message and, or we'll reach out to you if we see the words connect and we can have, we we can, we can go go back and forth, find out where your business is at. And if we can help you out, we're happy to do so. And if we can't help you out, what we'll do is we'll point you in the right direction of one of our colleagues or people we do business with that would be a better fit for you. So if you're looking for help, if you're looking to connect, if you're looking to grow and you want our help, definitely reach out, say connect in the comments and send us a private message. For sure. Awesome. Awesome. Lots of cool stuff. Lots of interesting people with interesting businesses on. Love it. I mean, I, I love that whole. Um, uh, per, I mean, I, I love the dis- disparity or, di- you know, the, the, the opposite ends of the spectrum. It's awesome. That's right. We got we got um, acupuncture, natura- uh, naturopathy. We got car parts and we got like amazing jewelry unique one of a kind imported jewelry um all over the place really really cool guys all right well we've been going for uh, a little over an hour i think we need to rein it in it was really good to see <laughs> yeah. you guys and awesome thank we'll you see, we'll see you again tomorrow at 11 a.m again if you want to talk about ramping up your business and connecting with either your existing or new customers in a, in a deeper, better way. So you can drive more sales of your products and services to the people who already want to buy them just right connect. And we can, we can have a chat about it in messenger. And then if it makes sense, we can get on the phone. Um, Awesome. Tongo. I saw that. And a couple of things is uh, number one, if you guys have other questions, other thoughts that you'd like us to address, then now's the time. Definitely let us know in the comments. Even if you're watching on the replay, we read all of our comments and um, use them in order to dictate a lot of the direction of our future live streams. And improve them. (laughs) Awesome. All right, Muhammad, nice to see you as well. Tongo, Valentina, Georgina, and everyone else who has been quiet in the background. Good to see you too. Appreciate it. I see you lurking, sunshine. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Very cool. All right, everybody. We'll see you soon. Enjoy the day. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Tillman. See you.